when in daylight, when the sun is shining, you see this glow like you see here. Well, but you if you're see in space, there's no atmosphere. So it should be a point of light. And they're showing a diffusion of light. This yeah, is on the it. journal site. This is how little attention they pay to the details that we look at. Okay. So this, let me respond things. by saying, first of all, the ordinary person is just going to, it looks like it's something you might see from Earth in a way. It's familiar. An ordinary person is going to be easily deceived because they've never been to the moon and the authorities tell them this is what the moon looks like. What do they know? All right. That's the right. problem with this whole thing. And so I'm really struck by the fact that they're even going to the lengths of creating phony composites now to further this deception and propaganda. Uh, I also want to give a shout out to Bart, who, and the funny thing happened on the way to the moon, very clearly demonstrated a fraudulent exercise with the communications, with all of that. Moon Man, his new book, Moon Man, an excellent book. What would you recommend to us to read if we're interested in getting more information about this virtually limitless topic of the <laughs> Apollo missions? We got Marcus, so you have your book that's out. Well, I'd start with this one because this it's about 25 years old now. It's got the main details in it. Yeah, okay. Dark Moon, Apollo and the Whistleblowers. Okay. Mary ben David Percy. Some very good films. The website that accompanies that book Aulis, A-U-L-I-S dot com. That will give you several weeks of reading. There are also very, there's films on there, but the Aulis website is the definitive website which covers this whole area. Okay, great. And then I've, I have a few articles of my own up there as well. That's uh, right, you have. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because there are many scientists around the world who've contributed to that site. Yeah. Scientists from China, from America, from Europe, it's not just people who are objecting to it. There are scientists who have made some very interesting discoveries about Apollo because we're well over 50 years after Apollo. It's been time for a new generation or two generations of scientists to examine it. And there's always one objection people put forward. Well, if it was fake, why didn't the Russians blow the whistle? It's a good question, but you have to understand the politics behind it. Apollo was not a scientific mission, it was a political mission. John Kennedy made his famous speech in Congress. He made this statement in May 1961, we'll land a man on the moon before the decade is out and return him safely to the Earth. That was his challenge. Two years later, he's dead. He's a hero. He's a martyr. We must honor our dead president's challenge. We will get men to the moon. That was Apollo 11. But when you start looking into the detail, and it can be a bit detailed, because one has to understand what's going on behind the scenes. You say, well, how could you possibly fake? How could you fool 400,000 people who worked on Apollo? Yes, 400,000 people did work on Apollo. They didn't need to be fooled at all. Was there a memo sent round? We're faking Apollo, don't tell anybody. That's ridiculous. They didn't know anything about this. Probably 40 or 50 people at the most were familiar with the faking of Apollo. And obviously Armstrong, Aldrin, all the astronauts would have been involved, and they were. You mentioned the uh, Apollo 11 press conference, three weeks after they returned to Earth, allegedly. They had this ridiculous press conference where it appeared that they were embarrassed about what had happened. Mm. Many of the Apollo astronauts have let slip certain things which, uh, shall we say, tend to confirm the fraudulent nature of Apollo. We have only completed a beginning. We leave you much that is undone. There are great ideas undiscovered, breakthroughs available to those who can remove one of truth's protective layers. Now, Neil Armstrong died in 2012. Where is he buried? He did a burial at sea, did he not? Yes, he was. He's buried at sea, but you'd expect him to be buried at Arlington National Cemetery, where American heroes are buried. There are three astronauts who are buried there. Gus Grissom, remember the Apollo 1 fire? It's oh, ridiculous. yes, I do. I remember that, yeah. But Neil Armstrong, as you say, is buried at sea off the coast of Florida. He didn't want a fuss. Because he was a naval 
aviator. He fought in the Korean War very successfully. He was entitled to a burial at sea, which he requested. Seems a bit strange, doesn't it? An American hero doesn't want his grave to be honoured. Anyway, it's a bit strange to me. My father was in the military, so I understand military tradition. But one of the key points is also Apollo 13. We haven't touched on that yet. Yeah. Apollo 13, the explosion halfway to the moon. One of the oxygen tanks exploded and there's a big drama to get them back to Earth. The, the three astronauts on Apollo 13, which was successful, and they did. What's not often known about Apollo 13 is the day after the official launch of Apollo 13, April the 11th, 1970 was the official date of the launch, the Soviet Navy were conducting exercises in the Bay of Biscay, off the north coast of Spain, west coast of France, part of the Atlantic. And they came across an Apollo command module floating in the sea. So being good sailors, they hauled it on board and took it back to their base at Mamansk. And six months later, the U.S. Coast Guard cut a south wind, paid a courtesy visit to Mamansk, and was handed this Apollo command module because the treaty says that any object from space should be returned to its country of origin. So the Soviets were returning it to the country of origin. And there are pictures of this command module on the Coast Guard Cutter South Wind and at the dock in Mamax. It's now outside the uh, Grand Rapids Museum in Michigan. You can go and see it. But you can't see inside it. It's strange that. But there's another command module, allegedly from Apollo 13, on display at the Kansas Cosmodrome. Why are there two command modules on display from one mission? Only one command module went up. So what's it doing in the, floating in the Atlantic? Nobody's ever answered that. Oh, it's a boilerplate, i.e. a practice mission. Yeah. But it was never reported missing. They're it's quite big things. Kind of, don't you think it's kind of funny? It's kind of, it's kind of hard to hide a Saturn V rocket launch. So how do you get the second one up there? If it was launched, the official launch of Apollo 13 happened, and it went off course and had to be brought back down again, if the astronauts weren't on board, highly unlikely they were, because if the thing had blown up on the launch pad, or any of the Apollo missions had blown up on the launch pad, the astronauts should be dead. That was the basis of the film Capricorn 1. Right. The astronauts survived, and they had to be killed. But they turned up at their own funeral. It was a bit embarrassing. That's in Capricorn 1. So the, these are anomalies. I mean, Apollo 13 is an anomaly. Technically, the craft, when there was an explosion on board a rocket, it would be blown off course. But the computers they were using then were not sufficiently powerful to be able to determine where they had landed up, having had the explosion, and where they should be, and correct the course. They couldn't do that. It all had to be done at, at Houston on the mainframes. Well, what, what you also call to our attention is the fact that the only way we know any of this about the Apollo missions is through the official sources. There yeah. were no confirming, corroborating, extra interested parties who were filming it or taking keeping tabs or whatever. Everything we learn is through NASA and through their channel, through their communications channels. So you had a single source of communication, basically, for everybody. Yeah. And that That's made it also very easy to perpetrate when you have something like that. Before we end, let me introduce people. You know, Robert, you should introduce yourself since you've been filming this and you're putting things, some things together. I've watched many of your videos, but just say hello to our audience yourself, if you would. Sure. Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name's Robert. I go by Robert Williams or Robert Wagner. Either name will do. What I do is I take all of the audio tracks that we record each week and I illustrate them so that everybody can understand what's happening. I think it's a better way. Now, also what I'll do is I'll take out all the stutters, ums, ahs, repeated words out of the audio track and then sync it up with Marcus and Scott and then I will key out the backgrounds and then just have them doing the talking and explaining exactly what's happening. One of the graphics that I like to use is the photoelectric charge of the moon, which I think is interesting because what ends up happening is that in a nutshell, very quickly, as soon as the sun strikes the moon's surface, the dust levitates. And then as soon as the sun goes down, the dust falls back to the ground again. This is a repeated okay. cycle. Many times I've shown the lunar reflectors 
full of dust in many of the videos because that's what you would see. Those little pockets would be full. So it's things like this that I will illustrate to help people understand what is going on here. So that's what I do. That's my key point. And of course, yeah, I picked great. up a lot of information along the way because I edit these eight to nine hours a day. That's what I like doing right. because I've been retired for a while. So I love doing this stuff. And even though we don't get many views because we are so shadow banned on YouTube and pretty much shut down on all the other platforms, it's something in my heart because it's so wrong what they're doing. It really is. Yeah. You know, well, this, Robert, I, I yeah. think I, this will give you a little bit to be happy, but I understand that in Russia right now, they're teaching that the Apollo missions were not what they seem to be. I don't know Same if you've heard China. that, Marcus. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, I've heard it. Well, certainly in China, that is true. And in China? And, okay. And Cuba have been doing it for years. Yeah. It's upset America no end. You know, the, here's the thing. Big powers will use their power to defraud people and manipulate them and create these mass hypnotic effects so they can be manipulated. And Russia is yeah. no exception either. Russia did its bid. But, the, but yeah. with Apollo, Apollo was, I think I said it in one of my articles, the greatest deception of them all. I mean, most of these things are negative. They're about catastrophes. And this is uh, this wonderful, magnificent thing that they convinced almost everyone to believe was true. And which upon close examination, I can't see how it could be true. And I, and I will say this again, if it were so easy to go back then in 69, they would have hotels on the moon by now. They'd have special <laughs> yeah. trips. They'd have the whole, they'd have spa baths there, whatever. They can't get back. They're not going to get back. Yeah. Despite however many promises they make, unless they solve fundamental problems about radiation, about vacuum and many other things. Scott, before yeah. we conclude, would you like to say a few words? I think you've just stated what I've stated on a few other occasions. If we were to progress the way technology has progressed over the last 50 years, we would at least have in low Earth orbit, we would have hotels. And you go up for the view. You go spend a few days and go a few times around the Earth and come back down. And you could jump on an Uber and get there because that's how easy it is to go to low Earth orbit compared to the moon. You're still protected within the Van Allen belts. I was going to pull the graph up of the radiation spectrum because it clearly shows the only thing that penetrates through the Van Allen belts are the visible light, UV and ultraviolet lights. The only thing penetrating through the rest of them are way off the gamma. And if you realize that the Van Allen belts protect the earth to the equivalent of three meters of lead, if you want to go out and travel in space, and I'm not talking about robots and satellites and everything else, but as human beings, we need to have that protection with us. We need to take everything that the earth provides to keep us alive on earth. We have to take all of that with us into space if we're going to travel yeah. anywhere. And that includes a little trip to the moon. Well, so what do you make of Elon Musk promises about the Mars colonies or the Mars missions and all that? Beautiful story. And by beautiful story, I shorten <laughs> that down to just BS. Yeah, I, know. I know, honestly. I think what I'm going to conclude on is I want to thank you both. Your efforts have been mammoth and very dogged and much appreciated. We have a number of resources for people to look at if they want to. Uh, I like Wisniewski's book, by the way, Gerhard Wisniewski's book. Yeah. But you, Scott, you mentioned the Dark Moon, Marcus, Bart Sabrell's film, A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon, Bill Casey and Ralph Rene. Yeah, Randy that, Walsh. Yeah. And don't yep. forget Trevor Weaver. Trevor yeah. Weaver, yeah. Randy Walsh. There are a lot of people who have looked into this and have written some wonderful things. And uh, the dialogue keeps going. You know, in yeah. a way, I believe that unless people see the extents to which governments or powers will go to defraud and, de and deceive them, we'll never get anywhere and we have to get this in the open this is a mammoth a, a huge fraud i actually think kids today growing up in our technological era 
they look back at the films and the clips of the thing taking off from the lunar surface and what were they playing? They were playing a crazy song, a military song. Sure, go off into the wild blue. Yeah, yeah the wild blue. Yeah, it's so absurd, so primitive, so ridiculous. But I think the thing to remember is that these missions were, would have been so hazardous. Every step would have been so hazardous. If anything failed and the liftoff from the lunar surface, you're done. If anybody got hit by a micrometeorite in the spacesuits they were jumping around in, they would have been toast. Every bit of it was extraordinarily hazardous. And we yeah. were made to believe it was just a lark, a jump in the park, you know, a little stroll in the park. Man, can I also yeah. mention one thing that you were saying? You're saying about yep. how this is such a farce. Well, why now do they need Astrorad vests when they didn't need them in 1969? Why do they need a lunar gateway station when they didn't need one in 1969? Why do they need 13 trips to refuel when they made it with one trip in 1969? Right. And it keeps going on. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Well, you said a lot. Exactly. Listen, they didn't do it. It didn't happen. And I think I feel with great certainty that it, it never happened. And I think that exposing the lies as you've been doing is necessary and wonderful. And you should all be commemorated for what you've done. So thank you very much. And we'll have a follow up at some point in the future. What's the next mission? Artemis? What are they planning? They're doing something soon? Sometime next year, I think. Yeah. Trying to go. So uh, thank you very much, everyone. And continue your good works. And I'll talk to you again. We'll have another show in the near future, okay? Thanks, okay, Manny. Super. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.